It's fine. And uh, he'll be here. He's actually <laughs> Okay. Um, you need a drink? Yeah. Councilor Council Edmonds, would you like to do sure. the honor, please? Heavenly Father, as we meet here tonight, we're thankful for the opportunity we have to serve the members of our town and for the opportunity we have to help the town grow and develop. We're thankful for all that has provided for us and we ask that we'll get us some things we say and do that we might be able to get along more with another. In this we ask in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you. Now we will call a meeting to order. And it's a regular meeting of the town of Calston. And we have an agenda. First of all, we'd like to recognize our media, Kim uh, Peavoy for the Temple Star and uh, our good uh, Channel 32, Corey McCarthy. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, we have an agenda that need to be amended somewhat. Uh, first of all, we need to delete from the agenda 5B. 8D, 13A, as our delegation uh, scheduled for 7 p.m. is not going to be present today. Furthermore, we need to do an addition. Sorry, and what, sorry what were the, one, the, the total one being? All the black list? sands. All the black sands. Oh, 8D? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <coughs> and we need to do an addition, and we might put that addition under 8E, and we will call it uh, EMS request. Okay. All right, with those amendments. I'll move to uh, adopt the agenda as amended. Thank you. All in favor? Thank you. Welcome, Councillor. Thank you. Uh, we now have to go to yet number six. So you're going to stay with me closely because we're going to jump all around today. So six is our adoptions are minutes from uh, the council meeting of November 10th, 2015. Councillor Bentley? I'll make the motion to accept the uh, the adoption of the minutes of uh, November 10th, 2015. Thank you. Any questions regarding those minutes? No. All in favor? Thank you. The minutes are now adopted. We will now go to uh, item 7, bylaw and policy. We have bylaw 1646, which is a council a procedure, procedural bylaw. We need third reading. Okay. I, will, I, I will move third reading of bylaw 1646, council procedural bylaw. Thank you very much. Any questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Thank you. Now, for the next two motions, you need to be with me. Number one, bylaw 1582C requires a motion to approve these slight amendments that have been uh, added to that. There were a few typos, a few uh, wordings that needed to be fixed. They are now fixed. So before we approve that through after the public hearing, we need to approve that amendment. So after the public hearing or now? No, no. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll, I'll move to approve the uh, amendments to the draft bylaw as presented. Of <coughs> 1582C, utility rate bylaw. Okay, all in favor? Thank you. Now, before we go to public hearing, also we're going to need to pass first reading on bylaw 1606E, electrician, electricity distribution bylaw. I move to um, approve first reading of uh, bylaw 1582C utility bylaw. Okay. 1606. 1606. 1606E. Which one is that? 1606E. Oh, um, give me that number again. 1606E. 1606E. 
Right. Okay. Okay. All in favor? Thank you. Now, before we go to 7D, you need to go with me to 8C. There is a letter from a citizen, uh, <coughs> Mrs. K. Libert, who sent a request to the town regarding cottonwoods in their backyards that need to be cut down. Her request is not to pay for, uh, for the town to pay for the cutting down, which is going to cost her and her neighbor six other dollars. It is to request the replacement of one tree, one uh, a little bit more mature fruit tree as an apple tree. Uh, the cost of it to the town would be about $300. Councillor Bendry. Uh, Mayor, do we not have a uh, tree planning policy in place for our boulevards as it right. is now? Yes. Do yeah, we not course. use that policy to do this, take care of this? And you know, I discussed exactly that very, um, that very item with Jeff. Essentially, what we need to do is that tree is going to go in her backyard. It's not going to be on the boulevard. So, for that reason, it is a little bit different. But because under the present policy, which we are going to look at repealing, if we, uh, we could have been hit with $6,000. And so $300 instead of 6000 I would say it's a, a fairly Nice deal. Yes, the rule request. I would say. So therefore, I would say the, the request is not unreasonable under the present policy that is in town. Uh, another yes. question. Uh, uh, what kind of tree do we use on the boulevards, Jeff? Councilor, I don't have that list with me. Um, there's a number that are considered suitable I want to say there's some flowering crabs and an ash and a few things but yeah I don't have it in front of me I wouldn't see the boulevard tree program is just a rebate for people if they it's a $50 rebate if they go buy the tree okay but we do budget money for tree replacement that yeah. you know we, we didn't have really any die on Main Street this year and I think would be okay if, if council wanted to support this we have money in our tree replacement Right, um, to do but that. you you are presenting an interesting point, uh, Councillor Bendry, because um, the the discussion maybe will carry on when we uh, discuss policy T five. Then I think we can come back to your notion of don't we have money or don't we have a program set up, and we have something in place that maybe we can discuss a little bit later. Would that be okay with you? Well, I'm just looking. Mayor, I'm just looking at the policy on the uh, on the tree uh, cottonwood tree uh, policy, and it says it will be replaced with a green ash or some other suitable tree up to eight foot. She's asking for an apple tree. She's asking for yeah, a tree that is about uh, eight foot apple tree, sixteen millimeters uh, around, not very big, as you can see. So, but, but my concern is is that is if we if we go with changing our policy on the type of trees that we we supply are, are we going to uh, do that for everybody mm -hmm. I mean I think it should be in the policy that we replace them with a certain type of a tree uh, amen and uh, because we can we hit up with uh, apple bearing trees or any other kind of tree that they want to so I, I think our policy needs to reflect Okay, that policy, as you can see, we're trying to repeal it altogether. Right, on August 25th. But there is some discussion right. that will need to happen. This is why we need to kind of deal with that before we deal with the other portion, which I kind of interlink, but needs to be separated at this point. So my thoughts on this particular request are, uh, as you would mentioned, uh, we could have based on this policy, been hit up for the $6,000 of the removal. Totally. Uh, $300 isn't a, a bad compromise, and 
the, my understanding of the reason for the policy being there was to try and get rid of some of the cottonwood trees in, in, well, in our area so, so that we didn't have that cotton all over the place. Mm -hmm. yeah. So on that basis of what the original policy's intent was, um, I, I think we should go ahead with it. Councilor Yeah, again, on the request, I think it's very reasonable. I, I do read it just a little differently. The, the, the current policy that says we'll assist with, and I don't know if, I mean, this has never been talked about, if that's a 50-50 agreement or a 10-90 or 90-10, I'm sure is what they would like. Um, well, but, but even, I mean, the $300 to me is completely reasonable. I do agree we probably want to redo this policy. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if we still have a cottonwood problem. And if we do, then maybe we as a town want to keep some kind of incentive for getting rid of But then maybe all we have to do is amend this policy. Yeah, this, this is why we need to discuss that a little later. Uh, and all those <laughs> are valid uh, points that we need to kind of look at as to what kind of policy we want to establish to deal with that issue. Because cotton, cottonwood trees, pollen bearings are all over the town. But there, there is something that we need to do. Incentive to look at? Sure, why not? And there is something in place that we could deal with. So, is anybody willing but should to... Should we be looking at the policy first before we deal with this? No, no, no we Cause can't. Cause, cause this because under the policy, we're supposed to pay the $6,000. I think the confusion is in the order that they appear in the agenda. Are we doing 7D or 8C right now? Right now we have to do 8C. Okay. Because if this we right. if we keep the policy, then we pay the $6,000. Okay. If that's the case, uh, I'm happy to move to approve uh, the necessary funding to put an apple tree of 8 foot size in her backyard. Thank you. For $300. For up to no, 300, is that enough to cover it? We provide a tree and the deal with it. So up to $300 to provide a tree. All in favor? Thank you. All right, so let's go back to 70. 70 has an issue, as you as you pointed out, Councillor Bendry. My, uh, my thought was we have already put in place through the uh, beautification committee a policy to have certain amount of trees added to our inventories of tree in the town. Jeff, can you, do you remember uh, exactly what we set aside as So many... Uh, you, you have a couple of things. Uh, you remember last year we put some money aside to do a, a number of fruit bearing trees and then going forward we have a, a lesser amount to uh, replace any that die. So to try and keep up that inventory that we put in. But you also have, I believe it's $2,500 in tree replacement, which is normally intended for Main Street if we have one of those Main Street trees die, because we have to hydro back them out and put the new one in and do all that work. So uh, we've been very fortunate the last couple of years. I think we've only had maybe one die in the last couple of years, so that's been fairly okay. So we have a couple of streams that we've been buying that with in the beautification. Okay, uh, a couple questions, Jeff. When we don't have any trees die on there, do we just reserve those funds from the budget over to the following years? Yeah, normally we thing? just bring it forward. Yeah. Okay, okay. so the issue is, if we repeal this policy, are we willing as council to maybe consider the idea of allowing an owner of tree in their backyard who wants to cut them that's their cost, but are we willing to assist them in incentive by, by allowing them the replacement of one tree up to maybe $300 for that proper, property, one per property? Is that something we could consider? I think if we if we took our existing you know, boulevard tree planting program and then revised that to include uh, you know, other other trees, you know, on the property, uh, you know, similar to what you suggested, I think that might be the, the way to do that. That way it puts it in into one policy that deals with, with beautification and trees. And, uh, yeah, because we want to encourage people to have tree, no doubt. All right, about 11 years ago, I planted seven trees, four down the side of my property in the south, and 
tree across the back end. They are cotton bearing trees, but they're not a cotton wood. Now, if you go back to this policy, you know, to remove these, it's, a, it's not a cotton wood, but it's a cotton bearing tree. So we need to look at that policy and are we, are we eliminating all of the cotton bearing trees? So I, I think there's two parts to this discussion. One is, are we rescinding this policy? And, no, if, we do, and if we do that, then the cotton bearing part of it is out of the question because it's not, that's not actually a part of any of the policies. No. Uh, and then it becomes a matter of what we're going to do going forward. Right. I, I kind of like what yeah, Councillor no, Peeboy said, if we include that in with our other tree policies so that it's all in one spot, and I would like to see something along the lines of, uh, you know, if we've allocated $2,000 for Main Street ones or for tree replacement or whatever that number is, if there is excess funds available, we don't have any trees die on Main Street, then those funds could be used to do something in people's yards. I don't think we want to get into the policy of How putting, many putting in apple trees in everybody's backyard in town. <laughs> Okay. But beets a flower and crab. <laughs> but this, but, but yeah. this is the re the reason. One of the reasons why we eliminated the the cotton bearing is because of the allergies and the mess and everything else. I agree with it. So we need to have something that talked about the cotton bearing trees. Yeah. That's but right now, right now, Councillor, I think you you're right, Councillor Buffett. We have two kind of discussion. One, we need to deal with the policy as it is, which only covers the cotton wood, which is the one that we need to repeal so that the cost doesn't carry on to be the onus on it. Um, yes. It doesn't sense. specifically say cotton wood here. It says in the policy, it says cotton bearing, of which there are many kinds. And I have okay. about 25 of them in my That's backyard that right. I hate. Yeah. <laughs> right. But, okay, so... What well, would entice you to get rid of those? So, <laughs> cut them down and chop them into firewood for me. So, hardwood trees. <laughs> so, I, I, I personally think that our first step is probably to rescind this right. existing policy. You want to put so, I, I will move to rescind policy T5. Thank you. Cut and, uh, wood tree policy. Cotton bearing. Well, it's called cotton wood yeah. tree policy. And yeah, great. and just for clarification, then the intention would then be to perhaps ask administration to come back to us with a suitable amendment to an existing tree, yes. something else. Yes. Absolutely. That would help fit this Absolutely. need. Yeah. Okay. Councilor Bakery. What I'm suggesting here is this I'm not going to cut all my trees down if I only get one tree back. Mm -hmm. no, but I've planned those for, for purposes. You know, one is for uh, shade bearing. One is for privacy, and, and one is for lux. And so if we've got to consider that when we consider, like, like I, I, Councillor Barnes says, he's got 25 of them in the backyard. So you cut 25 trees down, what's it going to do to the backyard? So, so that, that's where it comes into, that's part two of it. Right. When we do the whatever, whatever amendments we make to our existing policy, I think that's when we have that discussion of what we're going to include in there, right. how many trees we allow somebody to do inside of that. Mm -hmm. Etc. But for for now, that's why I made the motion just simply to rescind this yeah. this bylaw so this policy, and then okay. we'll create the new policy and with the, the and as Councilor Peeble said there, mm -hmm. so okay. it's all one spot. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think we had a good discussion on that. We realized that allergy bearing trees, regimes bearing tree is no fun at all to have in a community, but. We all suffer more or less from them. Yeah. So sooner or later, we need to create a better environment on that. Yeah. So right now, we have a motion on the table. Any more discussion or questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Thank you. So that policy is repealed. And we will uh, ask for administration, as Councillor Balfour requested and Councillor Creed suggested, and to look at a new policy revision for the existing uh, tree policy we have in town. And thank you, Councillor Bangry and Barnes, for bringing some additional thoughts. Yeah. Uh, one, one, one of the deficiencies in this 
policy was that it was too nebulous. It was not specific. So, uh, yeah, I, just, I would <laughs> I would suggest that if if we it needs to be precise. If we yeah, if we come up with a new policy that we put a specific dollar amount on how much the town is willing to, you know, assist. And I don't know if we can can we uh, restrict or prohibit the planting of new cotton bearing trees in the community. Is that is that a possibility? Uh, so human I don't know. <laughs> I just I smiled. I just typed that exact question. Oh, could oh. we prohibit the types of trees that could be planted in town? Yeah, yeah. well, it might be a phone call for us. Yeah. 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 It's I, a I, good I, question. I just want to look into it. Really. It's a good question. I don't know if we can or not. But anyways, whatever. Anybody come to uh, All right. We would be great to discourage it. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think. Okay, mm -hmm. we need to carry on and look at. Uh, 8A. Madam Mayor, on that yes, particular sorry. item, I, I was personally a little surprised to not see that as uh, as in camera. So, I mean, just before we discuss it, I was just wondering if we wanted to address that issue. Which item, sorry? 8A. I'm not discussing no, any personnel. It's no right? personnel. Yeah. Okay. It is, uh, as you could see, a proposal. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a draft proposal. I was just thinking it had for possible ramifications. That no. It is uh, yes and no, but I don't think more no than yes, in a sense that you are offering the possibility of assistant, assistance to right. the, the, the actual electrical department. That's what we're looking at. Excellent. I, I discussed this with Jeff yesterday afternoon, and I suggested the same thing, but it was clear that there would be no personal no. information no. or, or no, names mentioned, none. and so it doesn't need to be in camera. No. So essentially, if you uh, look at it, that proposal is to allow people uh, in a business to come up with proposal mm -hmm. as to how they would extend their services to add on to what we have already. So whichever form, mixture, hybrid, pro, hybrid model, whatever it might be, we really don't know until we put that proposal forward. I, I'd suggest that we turn it back to the uh, to administration to uh, carry forward with this and let them decide what kind of, what kind of an yeah. RFP do we need? Essentially, the reason it is there is to uh, offer support to administration to carry on with exactly. what they intended to do. do. Do we need a motion to approve this draft, or is, are you just looking no. for some general direction? I think what I wanted it on here for is I wanted to make sure before we sent anything out that I was interpreting that we're all on the same page with what we're looking for and what we're asking for. I want to be clear, it's an information gather only. Yeah. Yeah. And I made it clear within the RFP that there's many correct choices here. And those range from status quo to who knows what will be proposed. I don't know. So I just wanted to make sure that there weren't some chunks of information that you might want to know as a council that would assist in your evaluation um, prior to this going out. Is really, really what it came down to for me. I, I, I'm, I'm assuming that this is all, you've already discussed this with our electrical department. Yeah, yeah. Leonard's they're, been working with me on it. They're yeah. on board with, with, with this proposal or this request for proposal. Yeah. Uh, what I, when, as I read through it, what I really got out of it is almost what Jeff just said. This is pretty open-ended. Totally it, it's really an information gathering so pr request for proposal where we're just trying to see what interest is out there and whether or not it fits into a future direction that we later decide we want to go. So mm -hmm. I, I think this is really well drafted as it is. Personally, I appreciate the same open-endedness for the same reason. It's non-threatening, it's non-binding. The thing that I appreciate about this is uh, Section 5 where they talk about insurance and workman's compensation and stuff right, like that. Need to be the liability covered. for the town. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I appreciated reading that. Yeah, we, we totally obligated to that. Yeah, and again, I just, for the public that may watch and for you as council, I want to be clear, there's no um, foregone conclusions here. 
But we may find when this information comes back that there isn't someone out there that's prepared to provide service to the, the degree that which we would expect. That's, I specifically put questions in, for example, about non-emergent response time and emergent response time. Right. What if non-emergent response time is five working days? Yeah. Well, that, that's not going to work for us. <laughs> you know, that just simply makes our decision to maintain some form of status quo potentially much clearer. You know, so I, I, when I worked with Leonard on this, and I appreciate, Councillor Peebway, your concern about, um, about that, this is really, we want to see what's out there. We have some feel from especially Fortis. They've informally kind of talked to us about a number of things, but now's the time to put it down, put some hard numbers down, and see what the industry wants to provide. Yeah. Um, I don't know if this is, I don't know what the best way to go is with this system, but this is intended to help us figure that out. Mm -hmm. And that's how I looked at it from the start. Essentially, well, the public, yeah, essentially the public yeah. needs to understand that where we at and what prompted this uh, proposal draft is that we have really one lineman left on our payroll and we used to have three. Therefore, we uh, short, uh, not for the winter season because the work has been wrapped up as we speak, but for the spring season when stuff start to come again, we need to know how we're going to do business. Mayor, I, I just wanted to add for the sake of somebody who may be watching this, right. this isn't a discussion about selling or who owns the, the Right, it has right. no we, bearing we on we selling the asset. It's no discussion about no. selling it. This is simply about how we're going to go forward in the operations of it. Exactly. And the maintenance of the system yeah. at the level that is sustainable for our town. In other words, when we have a call, we want to know we can respond. Okay, Councilor Van Green. But we've also already in place, uh, uh, what do we, we call it, emergency uh, shared services? Well, like yeah, mutual yeah. yeah, on the yeah. yeah. regional level. Yeah. level All, we already, have that. already. Yeah. so if, if our department couldn't take care of it, we could call somebody. Yeah, right at, now, at this so point, as an emergency. Right, so we have time to, to deal with this. We, yes. it's, not, it's not urgent, we have the whole winter to, mm -hmm. yeah. to deal with that. Okay, so uh, administration, Jeff, what would you like us to do? you want to take it for information or do you want something more specific? If, if there's nothing that was glaring that we're missing some pieces, I'll just move ahead and we'll start distributing it. Please. We'll tidy it up a little bit okay. and begin distributing. All right, so yeah. are you going to take care of it before the end of the month? Yep. Yeah. Well, Thank you. Maybe not the end of this month, but definitely by the end of the year. I think we said we were distributing December 15th. Uh, by, by January 29th. That's your response. January 29th is your response. Is response. Right. I think we had December 15th is distribution. Okay, all right. Yeah. So it's in your hand. Thank you. Okay, 8B. Uh, Jeff, I don't know that you brought that uh, 37 oh. gift. Uh, I'll run down and grab it right now. Please. Okay, let me explain to you yeah. what that is. Uh, we went, when we had AUMA, we went with Jeff to a 27 urban Indian housing uh, authority. Um, big celebration was 40 years for them that they started that program and they really took the time to really explain how this came to be. We have seven houses in our town that are 27 and 27 is an authority that is looking after those houses in order for the property to be maintained at a fair level in a neighborhood that they're in. They're management yes. companies. They're, yeah, they're the, so they're, they're the that's what they are. And so in recognition for our support uh, to them, they uh, presented us with, uh, thank you, they presented us with this, this 37 urban housing and uh, we will find a place for it as being a partner with them. Wow. That was nice of them to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and we in turn uh, brought them a gift. And my husband had done something special for them. So it was a, an Indian chief uh, in wood that he had done. So that was quite nice of them. Okay, 
So you can see we're moving along fairly quickly here. Let's go to 8E. Councilor Bount, I'm going to call on you. If we can just hang on a second here. I'm sorry, I I got family calling me about my brother. They're texting me, so. Councilor, do you want me to take this? Yes, yes would you please? please? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, right. So what it basically is, is uh, the Rotary uh, Club on a regular basis takes vehicles down to Mexico. Last year, uh, last year uh, if you remember, they took down uh, uh, the handy, old handy bus down there. So we have uh, an old uh, uh, emergency ambulance vehicle that is being in the process of being replaced. We should have the new one in place by the end of this month. Um, and so the proposal was to donate the old one for Rotary to take down uh, and donate down to Mexico again. And so because the town of Carston is one of the owners of that, indirectly there, uh, it needs to come before council for the council's approval to do that donation. <coughs> Mayor, as I sit on that committee uh, a while back, this ambulance has been decommissioned for approximately a year. And uh, so it cannot be used as an ambulance in Canada or in Ottawa too but it can be used down there and they'll put it immediately to work. Okay. And this so isn't a case of donating a vehicle that we are in need no. of here. Right. No. right. It's, uh, it's first of all... It's been replaced already. The, the Rotary is a, a fantastic humanitarian program and uh, I think if that authority can help them and if we can approve that help, by all means. I'll make a motion that we... Uh, allow uh, Carson EMS, Carson County EMS services to donate the ambulance for a cost of one dollar to the Lawson, Lawson Legos project. I think it's uh, from the Rotary Club. I think it's to the Rotary Club. It's, it's to the Rotary Club. Uh, if, if I could just maybe uh, friend a friendly amendment to that, that we support the emergency services donation to it as, a, as opposed to allowing. Yeah. Support. 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 Yeah. 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 The thing about that uh, ambulance too is that once the Rotary Club gets it, they have their their project. They refurbish them. Yeah. They yep. fix them up really good so that they're they're, they're ready to go when they get down there. And it's a yeah. long drive down there. It's, it's a long drive. drive. Yeah. Good mechanic. And, and, and it's and a great uh, thing. The people absolutely yeah. are so grateful down there when they receive Okay. It. So we have a motion on the table. I don't want to forget the motion. So all in favor? Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, now let's go uh, eight, under nine financial report. You don't have one this term. Under ten committees. I have some uh, committees. Uh, Mayor, before yes. we move on financially, can I ask our administration to share with us where our pool of funding is at this point in time? I mean, where we're at. Oh, yeah, where are, you, where are we at with the project and, and can, how's the funding Council, for that? Councillor, can you keep okay. it on the questions? Sure, or even 10B. Put, or it, or put it on the yeah. 11. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Would you mind? You bet. Okay, thanks. I do okay. Mind, but I'll <laughs> well, you gentlemen, thank you, Councillor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I shall not ask you that question. <laughs> Okay, under 10 committees. So let's go through the committees. There are some that have not been filed and I need your help. Okay, the Ag Society nominating airport. Okay, Alberta Southwest, you were not there, Councillor, right. at the last October 7th. You gave us a minute. Is that a problem for you, that committee? No, not at all. I, uh, in fact, I, I'm on a subcommittee of that committee that uh, is driving the whole internet and web, but they do that at the end of the month. So my meeting with them is tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. So if we could know those type of things sure. ahead of time so that we can have a little note there so I don't bother you with the questions. No worries. No worries. Mayor, if it's all right and it's, uh, it's approved by this council, um, we have no meeting to report for the airport, but if 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 it's possible and if it's allowed, 
Could Jeff update us on a little bit of the of the airport of what's happening out there? I really don't know that we have any more information that we had last month. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> um, I think it's important we know. Yeah. That. So I, I finally got the um, information from Parks and Environment and Parks. Sorry, it's who it is now. So the town does not own the airport land. We have a license of occupation to use a small portion of the airport land. And what I found out is there's actually 65 and a half acres of airport lands out there. Um, we cannot, under the license of occupation, do any type of subletting or subleasing arrangement. However, they're totally, that's just because that's the current arrangement. If this agreement was put in place in 1975, is when we looked at it. And um, they're open to amending the agreement to accommodate our needs to some degree, I think. But I talked to them about just transferring the lands over to the local municipality. You know, if there's no need for the province to have it, uh, we, so we had some discussion. They sent me the process for applying for those lands. Well, when I get all that sorted out, because I just got it not long ago, um, we'll have some discussion. I, in my mind, the county is probably the reasonable person well, to assume the lands and maybe take a stab at getting all 65 and a half mm -hmm. yeah. from the province because it's all sitting there. So, yeah, there's a number of new things that have come to light on the airport, but, but uh, the bylaw and then the potential agreement we we're going to do with them won't fit under our current license of occupation. Mm -hmm. So okay, we have to look at that good a question. Bit. And thank you, Jeff, for the update. Thank just you, Dr. Just a Dr. quick clarification on this. Uh, so, just for my understanding, mm -hmm. uh, an airplane's running down doing a takeoff on the runway there. It's cracked, unfortunately, the land ship or whatever. Airplane crashes, who's liable? Mm -hmm. Oh man, great question. Is that the town? Is that on the runway? We carry liability insurance for the airport and the activities that go on there. We, we so, kind of set up. I would say no matter how you sliced it, we'd be third party at least into that mess. No matter how you sliced it. But, um, so yeah, there, there's a number of issues there, right? One of the things that I've mentioned before is We've budgeted money for next year to do a real property report so that we can get all the easements extended because everybody's about that short of their hangar to run the gas line. So the easements don't extend to their hangars. Well, if we don't own it, I'm not really crazy about paying $5,000 to have a real property report done. Right. You know, especially now that the parcel's 65 acres and not the five or six that I thought it was. <laughs> um, that's more than $5,000. Yeah, that's my worry. That's my worry. Mm -hmm. Mayor, as I sat down with Jeff and we discussed the airport uh, yesterday afternoon, because this has been coming uh, to light, I think it would be interesting that when Jeff brings the, the total report back to us, uh, that we look at the financial end of it too. You know, what we discussed uh, with the county and, and with the town. And uh, I think we can work some, some good things out for us. Now, what, what Council Bank is referring to is we charge a lease amount. It's relatively nominal, but we charge one. But the county also taxes the improvements there because it's within the county boundaries. So there's a couple of revenue streams there that if we were to get them both going back towards the airport, we may be able to support it a little more appropriately. But or make sense. We may need to work and work with the county and help them may potentially reassume those lands. Yeah. So, um, Councilor Creed, that's... Yeah, just curious. Now, that other 65 acres, uh, right now, is, is somebody farming that? I believe so, yeah. 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 And who's getting the revenue? I don't know. Our revenue, obliga we're, we're obligated to pay the province $137 a year to occupy the land. No. Um, which I was going to point out, the contract says 65, but I assume it doubled somewhere in there since 1975. <laughs> 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 the inflation gets in. There again, yeah, that's uh, right. Councillor Creed brought up an interesting thing, and we need to know what's happening with that, yeah. and what's happening with all the yeah. with all the monies that are at the airport, so that we can collaborate it and we can make a decision on what we want to do. Well, there, Thank there, you there's an interesting. Answer, yeah. If you look at county, if you were to talk to some of the county councillors of any county, you would find there's a lot of interesting history with licenses of occupation because they tend to get claimed and understood and assumed to be somebody's land that's used it historically. Mm -hmm. And the province really doesn't pay a whole lot of attention to 65 acres down in southern Alberta. So there's probably somebody who's been using it for many, many years, years that, or four, 
I guess we're 40 years, sorry my math's a little better there, 40 years that, uh, I don't know what the story is, but... Maybe we should send the bill and see... Yeah, maybe, maybe we're owed for a little bit of uh, farming, I don't know, I don't know, <laughs> but that's a quick story of what I finally got this last few days from the province. Okay, well you, uh, Jeff, sure. um, we have the collegiate committee still there as a committee, what's happening with that? I'm not assigned to it, so I don't know... To your counselors here. So, for all intents and purposes, it's not functioning right now. There's a couple of inquiries going on that we're waiting for some reports back, but uh, it's. So, what is that going to take to move the committee? Right uh, I don't think that there's unless, unless somebody wanted to write a check for six figures to move it forward. I think that's kind of almost where it's at. Yeah, I, and I can speak to that as well. Uh, we need perhaps to open it up to maybe more volunteers as well, where there's a manpower issue. Okay, so does administration know that to put a... Uh, well, that, uh, that's probably something we, we should going have on? a meeting about and then to decide where. But right now it's in a holding pattern and it's not costing anybody anything. What the is downside is well, it's not now. helping in legal that. Well, they haven't said they haven't spent a penny. It's, yeah. it's not the point. The point is, is something that we desire we to desire. see yeah. moved, and so I would like to see some movement, or once and for all, call it that. Yeah. So the the big picture of it right now is is the the structure that we originally were going after. It's changed. That's changed. And completely changed. Right. Uh, there's some ideas on some potential options that we're waiting for some reports back on and until we have those we don't know whether it's dead or not. My personal opinion is it, it's on life support. <laughs> well, it's, well, it's, all it's, it's all on their end, isn't it, Councillor Barfus? What, what's that? It's all on their end. For it's which part? For the response back to us. Or what they're, what yeah, well, as far, as far as like in Southern Virginia goes, that's dead. No, no, that, one. that's one. That's it's an avenue for. that we know is gone, but there was the idea of becoming a virtual university mm -hmm. from somewhere. We're right. Still pursuing that. So still pursuing a couple of options there. We're just waiting for some reports back. Okay. okay. All right. Well, we shall wait for the report. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Uh, FCSS Councillor Bangri, you went to that meeting, but I don't have a report. I, I, I went to that meeting, and I, it was my first meeting, and it was a dispersal of the uh, of the funds for that year, uh, it went, how can I say, it went really good. And I, I just was not up to speed on, on the actual uh, disbursements and how that happened and so forth. And, okay, and, now. And I'm sure that uh, I've got the book on the policies and stuff like that, and I, I've had an opportunity to look through it. Give me a little bit of a sense. I know that I want to bring a, a resolution to the FCSS AGM. What is that resolution all about? I don't know. Maybe Council of Credos. No, I'm not aware of what that is right now. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can find out for me. Okay, so, uh, fire. I'm back at you, <laughs> Councilor Bacchus and Van. My two bits of discussion with Danny today triggered some interest. He said that next meeting you are going to formally approve uh, the requisition, but that at this meeting he wanted us to review his proposals uh, regarding the budget. So, can you help me? We have them there. If I have asked Jeff to give us a copy of it, just for the sake of it, if that helps you when you go back to your meetings, there's a few things that we probably need to discuss, and uh, maybe we should discuss them now rather than later. Do you want to distribute early. them? Sure. This is, you, you probably have the standing sent it out a few days ago. I'm not picking on you guys, I'm just trying to help no, no, you. Just <coughs> I'm just going to help you push your work along. 
because eventually uh, that will come as a requisition. So this is an L shaped. I, I think I think maybe to try to understand the whole, maybe best to start to look at the fleet replacement forecast because this is what's going to make the the greatest impact. Yep. So the fleet replacement, really, if you add up the bottom column, the bottom line, over up to 2030, uh, you would say you would see that for every year, in order for that plan to work, then it needs about 124,000 bucks a year in capital expenditure or capital revenue over each of those years. Now, that's something you need to keep in mind. That amount of money is very big. That that's between the county and the town, right? Yeah, that's still $60,000. Right. Yeah, 60 grand for us, 2000 yeah. Okay. That's a lot of money. Then, if you go back to the 2016 budget, the way it is uh, given to us, you would say that uh, Danny shows a reduction in the requisition compared to 2015-2014. But in fact, it's really only a very cosmetic re reduction. Yes. The reason being that in former years, there was a capital equipment replacement of $40,000, if you look in the bottom capital budget on line 69. And this year, it appears as an expense somewhere of $10,000. Where is it? Well, so right there in the 71, same line. If you follow, if you follow the total capital budget, there's a lot of it. 65 10, and 70. Right. Yeah. So you can see that in order to show requisition reduction this year, really, there is a shortage of $30,000 in capital, which the last odd, what, year. What was there last year? Which last year was included which, which in the Which is now what he's proposing would be a sixty-two thousand dollars. So it would be actually an increase of another thirty thousand over top of what. So when you really look at the true increase of that requisition, it's fairly substantial. It is. Because now we're talking one hundred seventy-three thousand six hundred twelve, but we're also talking for the town. $40,000 extra for the town, almost the same for the county uh, portion, so that's an extra $80,000. So really the requisition as a whole for that EMS is really $173,612 plus $80,000. Plus, six, plus $62,000. No, well, uh, really, e we're not bringing $62,000, we're going to we have budgeted forty thousand dollars. Well, yeah, I know, but that, that's, that's what he's. Here. If, if you go through the two numbers together, what he's proposing here is the one seventy three as a regular requisition plus another sixty two thousand dollars is what it works out to over the time period. Now for this year, he's got it at I think forty thousand for for this year, but it averages out to sixty two thousand dollars a year. So. Yeah. Mayor. So we need to... I'm going to stick my neck out. It's oh, <laughs> stick your neck because there is, there is a capital a need there, as I tell you, 124000 is what it needs. But what bothers me is this. In the, in the fire system and, uh, and the firefighting system, there's this perception that your trucks and your equipment will only run for 15 years. Regardless of, of, regardless of what condition they're in, they'll only be good for 15 years. I do not believe, because I come out of the mechanical field, that you replace a truck just to have a shiny new paint job. If that truck and that, that equipment is working great, why replace it? 
Then he said he, he put a life of 30 years on each machine. Is that so far? I, I don't, I, I, I can't see it. I'm sorry. See, from, from 2015 to 2030. Well, that's 15 years, but 15 I don't years. know how all the trucks are up to now, right? Yeah. That's something I do not know. I, I, I know from, from my perspective, I, I was getting the idea too that it was a matter of policy to replace every so many years. Exactly. But it's not a matter of policy. It shouldn't be a matter of policy. It should be, the policy should be that if the machinery is working, then you just keep it going. But if the machinery is failing to the point where it's going to cost too much money, then you've got to look at replacement. Okay. That's my feeling. Uh, okay, so those are points. Uh, do you discuss those points, though? Uh, I, I would say Councillor Bengry's impression of, of the fire world's perception of what it needs to be replaced is very accurate. Yeah. And, and that is, for what I was getting from Danny was that that's exactly the, the terms that he's, the frames of reference that he's thinking in. And while we were talking, I mean, I was the new guy at the table, and so I was still trying to absorb a lot sure, here. Absolutely. But while we were talking, that was one of the things that was going through me, is that what, 15 years later, why is that machine have to be replaced? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I believe that, those, that a lot of that machinery could very easily be 20, 25, 30 years okay. out. Well, the question for us is how far does it go? Okay. And, you know, and, and so we've got a 15-year-old truck with 5,000 uh, miles on it. Okay. What we do. <laughs> uh, but yeah. help me then. Help me. Because that requisition is going up where? So, okay? so I, I was not under the impression that we were doing requisitions at our next meeting. So that information that you had was news to me here. Well, that's what I got from Jim. And that well, might be what he's planning on, on bringing to the table next, next meeting. Um, and this we'll have is a good discussion about it. Yeah, well, we, we, we looked at these last meeting. But I it's didn't walk away from our last meeting thinking that we were going to be uh, issuing requisitions in December. I think you are. If I may, and this is just for clarification because this is my first time seeing this. I, I, I'm having a hard time seeing where it's implied that the requisition in amount I increases to the, to the municipalities. Okay. So, I, I mean, I see where they're saying requisitions it's, appear. It's a way... And in addition, you're saying there's 63,000. So no, they're separating out the capital requisition from the regular requisition. Right. Which, which they've never done before? Never. No. No. They've never done before. No. So, but so if, you look at, if you look at the requisitions from 2015 on on the, the budget part, right, right. so at the very, the very bottom, yes. you'll see $40,000 was the capital portion of that. And so that 40 is disappearing on the next budget. So, that's so right. yeah, and this is separate now and yes. asking for more than that's 60? Yeah. Well, right now... Because a jump from 40 to 60 okay. sounds like only... Right now, more. Danny's... No. Danny knows, as you know, Danny was there at our last budget. Danny knows that we have reserved 40,000 because we knew that somehow some kind of capital needs were going to, to hit us. We kind of knew it. Looking at this, it is obvious to me that it is coming our way. My question is, in separating those two amounts, one is a requisition, the other is, seems to be a desire of Danny for us to have a policy in place, almost a policy in place, saying that we will reserve right. so much money every year and not to make it part of the requisition. So, so if, if I might, um, if, you, if you look, Councillor Peeboy, if you look at what the actual requisitions amounts are, it, it drops by $14,000 this year from last year, right? Right, right. But, but, he's, but he's wiped out $30,000 difference in the requisitions. Sure. So, so really, the requisition hasn't dropped because he doesn't have that capital in there. Everything else has gone up yeah. enough that it almost, in with fact, fourteen thousand dollars, it it was all of the capital requisition from last year, right. and that's where this capital number gets really big in a hurry. Okay, so maybe what what would be uh, appropriate for council to send back to our councillors that are there is number one to really try to understand that fleet that they have 
And how old is that equipment that I have right now? And what could be the extended life of each of those <coughs> equipment? So if you look on his fleet replacement forecast, he gives an estimate there he has what a year. the life cycle is. Yeah. Okay, so... Uh, he has put them to 20 some years. Some of them are 20 some years, 15. some are 15. Some of them you don't have a choice on, for example, on the scuba stations and bottles and stuff. Those are are pretty much mandated, but they're, they're relatively small amounts. That's right. All right, so are we satisfied that when you have an engine pump uh, 20 years live, that it is appropriate to replace it? <laughs> See. Maybe Jeff could give us a better sense regarding what we do at the town level regarding uh, depreciation or amortization of capital assets. What do we have? Maybe, maybe you do, maybe you don't, I don't know. We would have useful life guidelines for the accounting of the assets. I would imagine a fire um, truck. So, so so I they, I couldn't speak to the life of that equipment. I just don't know it. You know, there, it's much right. more complex than a three-quarter ton truck. Mm -hmm. So we've been trying to upgrade our fleet and machinery, but we, we haven't said that after X amount of years we're disposing of a piece of equipment. We just assess condition every year. Right. So obviously there are years assigned for accounting purposes, but we don't use them for replacement right. necessarily. So you use, you use your judgment as to the life of yeah, that machinery. So maybe that is something you want to question, I don't I, know. I, I know just as an example, I had a conversation with uh, Councillor Gates from Glenwood today about their, their mm -hmm. fire truck. And they're, they're actually a little annoyed at the way this is all included in here. Exactly. Because they paid for all but 20% of the cost of it. And now it's suddenly an asset of emergency services okay. over here. Well, so okay. there's a okay. there's a bunch of issues there as far as the equipment goes that needs to be dealt with. Okay, so Councillor Balfour, would be fair enough to for you to question oh, that be, yeah. capital. Thing? I think that would be a okay. fair comment. Please, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and Councillor Bounce, uh, you two can work together yep. regarding that. Yeah. I really feel also that we need to try to figure out what we're going to do regarding the way we're going to fund that capital. What is it? Should it be proportionate according to uh, the membership, the same way as it is for the rest? In other words, if we pay $40,000, would it be fair for the county to pay thirty-seven and the other whatever the difference is? And if so, how is that fund administered? Who administers it? What is it, that money? What would be our position as the way we would prefer for that capital to be requisitioned? Because that, that's part of well, the question. Well, Danny, you can right? come at a better time. <laughs> Perfect time. Danny, we have some questions for you. Okay. But honestly, we have a public here. Yeah. Yeah. So you just off the hook. You've got a couple of minutes. We have okay. two minutes. We, we have two minutes. Okay. Danny, help us, if you don't mind, understand a little bit the capital requisition, the way you envision that amount of money. Because we looked at your figures there. If we look at all that amount of money, until 2030, we calculated it, it represented about $124,000 of uh, capital revenues that you would need to raise, okay? Per year. Uh, per year. So in other words, you were looking at the town, the members, to kind of help you with purchasing all that equipment over those years. One question that we have is how do you intend us to help you with that capital? Okay, well, um, first of all, this is basically um, come about by a US, ULC standard with the equipment that we have, um, <clears throat> with the understanding of a couple things on this. The ones that are in green, I don't know if 
Do you all have a we do. Yeah. 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 So if they are in green, they're not even calculated into those things because there's a few provisions that we could change or we could alter this a little bit. Um, some of this are mere suggestions. This is a guideline whether we choose to do anything or nothing or something. It's just an awareness thing of what we have and what it is today or going forward what it projected to cost to replace. So whether we choose to do anything or some of it or none of it, it's just more of an awareness. Okay. So when you say more an awareness, you have a certain amount of trucks. It's not later you have a certain life. Correct. And the life might be beyond what you have as expiry years. There is because that's a paper kind of yes. date, right? Correct. The trucks could go beyond that. There, yes, with some provisions. Um, and uh, I could give you more information on that for the UL, ULC standard. In the real world, in the bigger cities, they'll suggest that it's a 15-year cycle. In this, I've suggested a 20-year cycle. As, as far as the uh, pumps are replaced. And they are a fairly big ticket item. So having said that, we could extend it somewhat. But having said that, you're losing value going forward. The longer you keep them, the less they're going to be worth later. Daddy, do you keep an accounting on each unit? Yes. Separate. So you could verify what it's costing us to operate that vehicle over a year time. Um, well, I mean, we could, I could pull it out, what we spent, and then break it down per unit. Yes. That's, that's the invoices that I pay are, are that, based on... As a counselor, I'd like to see those. Okay. And that, that merits whether we replace a unit or not, you know, as far as I'm concerned. I guess part, part of my, just to, to clarify things here, uh, so when we say a replacement for a, a pump truck is... Three hundred thousand dollars, three hundred fifty thousand sure. dollars. Yeah. Twenty years from now, uh, or ten years from now, there's also a residual value from that truck. Then, like that's it, it, it would have be... some value. For example, the ones we have now, engine two and four, right now I'm being told they're a value today of about fifty thousand dollars each. Okay, so that's not factored in. Correct. But Danny, at the same token, those engines could go to Hill Spring, Glenwood, or something like that for their fire equipment. They could. Uh, one of those bumpers, just because of the the um, guidelines say, for example, if Hillsping rolled it, they couldn't operate it with two people. Okay. Uh, thank you. It's six o'clock and we have a... Uh, oh, should I answer your question? Oh, you'll be back. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll be back if you don't mind giving us a couple more minutes yeah. afterwards. Thanks. Okay. So maybe it'll help us sort out of questions. Okay. Thanks. So at this time, okay. I, will, I will move that we adjourn to a public hearing for um, uh, utility, uh, yeah, utility right. rate by law utility rate by and, law. The distribution. and electricity and distribution, and electricity by law. distribution by law. Sorry. And, and That's all right. Yeah. All in favor? All right. Okay. Jeff is yours to help us with okay. this, please. Thank you. Well, in the absence of a large delegation, unless Danny came specific to talk about utility bylaws, um, I'll try and be relatively brief. Uh, is the first one on the agenda 1582? Is that correct? Yes. Yes. That's yes. Correct. The first one? Okay. So we'll start with that one. 1582C. Okay. So 1582C, it's a bylaw of the town of Cardston to amend bylaw 1582, which is utility rates. The town of Carts in the province of Alberta assembled amends as follows that Schedule A, the setting out of the rates, will be replaced with the new Schedule A, and that the bylaws 1582 A and B will be repealed. Now, with that being said, I'll generalize some of the things within the bylaw. First of all, I want to explain the rationale for the bylaw change. With utility rates bylaw, there seems to be through the discussion two rationale that, that were forefront. One was to amend the rates to reach a capital reserve amount that is appropriate to fund capital expenditures and reduce dependencies of federal and provincial transfers for utility installation. This leads to better financial sustainability. The second reason is to reallocate the rates so that the users of the utility pay their equitable share of revenue into the utility. So those are two of the driving factors behind the utility rate. Um, one of the things 
that uh, council will find, and I need to offer you a, well, I'll just explain it within the bylaw. Without going over every rate structure and every class, the ones that would hit the biggest bulk of any uh, consumers within the community is the residential metered rate for water. 2016 to 1925 as the flat rate and going to $20 thereafter for both the next two years. The consumption being at 85 cents to 91 and then to a dollar. Commercial and industrial metered flat rate the same uh, flat rate schedule, in fact, both are the same. 1925 to 20 for the flat rate and 85 cents going up to a dollar in 2018. So that stays the same. The only change you would see is in the consumption rate of institutional. So that starts a little bit higher and ends a little bit higher from 93 cents to a dollar eight. Um, otherwise, the other thing to be pointed out that would hit almost a, the entire uh, community collectively is in the sewer rates. The in-town metered sewer rate going from 42 to $44 from 2016 to 2018. And the commercial and industrial doing the same, 42 to 48. Remembering there is a consumption piece on that as well. So that consumption piece, as you'll recall, was averaged. Instead of there being a reward for high consumption, the rate was averaged. And um, what that did is it also has the institutional users paying almost identical to their consumption on the system. So the revenue almost totally equals consumption. Um, that is the, the high level hits on the utility rate bylaw. And this is reviewed about every three years. There are a number of other schedules for non-metered rural and a number of other uh, uh, items there. I don't see anyone in the, de in the delegation that would fall into those rate classes. So I'm not uh, too concerned about exploring every one of those rates uh, for explanation of the bylaw, unless council feels otherwise. Councilor, just interject for those of you who haven't got a rate sheet, they're in the back. Yes, That's sir. There for, for those of you who came in and yeah. didn't grab one, they're on there, and you can understand what we're talking about. Okay. Anything else on 1582C, council? Okay. All right. So that is good on this one. Okay. Do you want to carry on yeah, with so uh, the next one? Yeah, please? I'll speak to 1606E, and then if there's no questions, you can go back to your regular meeting. So 1606E is a bylaw of the Town of Cardston to amend the electricity distribution bylaw. Cardston is the owner of the distribution system within the town limits, must have a bylaw regulating the costs and the fees associated with operating that system. This amendment has two parts. Schedule A is the rate schedule that will be effective January 2016. And Schedule B is the terms and conditions. And I'll touch on each of those schedules for the sake of uh, clarity for the public. The rationale for changing each of these bylaws, uh, for Schedule A, the rate schedule, really makes it so that the rate reflects the changes that were forecast by both the Alberta Energy Alberta Electrical Systems Operator, ISO as we call them for short, and Fortis. ISO is the one who our transmission, the transmission rate portion of the bill goes to, that is to fund the costs of the large transmission system through the province. The distribution portion goes to the town of Cardston and to Fortis to get the electricity from the substation uh, northeast of town to the town of Cardston. And we've uh, been given notice of increases in both of those rates. So the rate changes are to accommodate those. Rationale for Schedule B terms and conditions was simply to make sure that our terms and conditions are updated to ensure compliance with ISO and the Alberta Utilities Commission and any other provincial regulation and also to clarify areas of ambiguity and I'll speak to that a little bit more in a minute. So four rates. Really, the best way to deal with this, and, and it's maybe a sad commentary on the bylaw, is not to refer specifically to the bylaw. The bylaw is listed in kilovolt and kilowatt hour per day charges. And the fact of the matter is none of us know what that means for the end bill. Simple as that. So what you have um, in the package and what we have on the back table for anyone interested is a typical monthly impact. That's one of the things. And a, well, I'll talk about the proposed changes of transmission and distribution rates. 
in the um, transmission charges, the service charge and the system usage charge, there is no proposed change for 2016 from what it was in 2014 and 15. That will stay static. The change will be in the transmission rider. In 2014, there was a $4 transmission rider charge. In 2015, there was a $6 transmission rider credit. The proposal for 2016 is that there is neither a charge nor credit rider. And that that will just come out. In the distribution charges, and this is largely in part to a, a, a pretty high percentage increase coming from our cost of distribution, that rate will go from, in 2015, $17.38 per month to $19.11, and the system usage charge from $16.52 to $18.18. The local access fee will also see a, a few 50 cent, not even that 40 cent change. What that means is looking strictly at the rates, it's a 1.9% change from 2014. So I've taken 2015 out of that because there was such a large credit rider. It was an anomaly. So going back, it, it is a bit of an increase over 2014, uh, all in the distribution piece. Uh, you will see the same proportionate breakdown in small commercial and medium commercial with proportionate uh, actually decreases in those. And the better sheet to look at for the impact is the sheet that says typical monthly bill impact on the whole bill. Remember the distribution and transmission don't consider consumption. They're not actually considering the cost of energy. So when we factor in the cost of energy on a typical 600 kilowatt hour user per month, we anticipate a change from, from 2014 of 1% is what the impact on the typical residential user will see is a 1% change. It is a 10% change from 2015 because there was a $6 credit rider in 2015. Small commercial will see a 2.7% decrease on average from 2014, and large medium commercial will see a 3.7% decrease on average uh, from 2014. So those are the ones we use to compare with the anomaly in 2015. So that, in short, is a summary of Schedule A in the bylaw. Um, Schedule B, and while uh, I want to not put too many people to sleep on this one. <laughs> I'll touch briefly. What was changed was the terms and conditions in our, how we regulate the distribution system. So we have to, by rule, have a bylaw that outlines how we deal with our customers, how we deal with retailers operating in the area, and how we deal with uh, all the other stakeholders. I think the best way as I look through this is I simply took um, a few notes from the current bylaw as it reads, and I'll just point out a number of things that were added to the new bylaw because there really wasn't much taken out. There was just a number of pieces added for clarity. So in definitions, there was a number of definitions added just to add clarity. Um, the under general provisions, there was some regulatory authority, um, how we get our authority and where other parties get their authority, that was added. There was um, under dispute resolution, either whether it's between customers and retailers or us and retailers or any of the parties, there were some items added as far as dispute resolution. In the retail access service portion, um, there was a couple of things cleared up around de-energization or shutting off meters. Um, under metering equipment, there was some things added about unmetered sites or changing metered equipment and there was also conditions added under each class about hard to access or unsafe meter locations and some of the obligations or things we can do to mitigate that. Um, invoicing, there was a few things added. Eligibility of retailers to operate within the community, there was a couple of pieces added. Um, other than that, there was a section added on distributed, sorry, distributed generation services. So uh, renewable generation within the community, just making sure that there's some regulation and construction consistency and regulation consistency around those pieces. And other than that, that was the changes to the terms and conditions. I'm, there wasn't anything in my opinion that would materially affect anybody, any current customers or any residents of the town under their current um, contracts or obligations or current usage. Uh, it's simply administrative uh, changes. 
So that's what I would uh, give you on bylaw 1606E. All right. Uh, Councilor? Yeah, uh, on this uh, last bit that you were talking about for the renewable, do we have a policy in place where we would credit someone for putting power back into the grid? So we as a town will not. They can work in agreement with their retailer to net meter so that they can put back and it, they can get a meter that reverses okay. and so that, that okay, so it so credits that them or bills them depending on which way the energy is flowing. So we don't enter into agreements to pay for that. We just have to make sure there's infrastructure pieces in place that if you have solar panels on your home, for example, and we need to go work on the lines feeding your home, there's not power feeding back through the lines. So there's some code issues we need to work through and to accommodate people who want to use renewables, we need to make sure our system can accommodate it as well. So it's touching on a few of those pieces. All right. At this point, I will ask the public if they have some questions. If not, we are good and we'll carry on proceeding. So we just reconvene to council exactly meeting. Exactly right. Uh, I'll move that uh, we reconvene back to our regular council meeting. All in favor? Thank you. You've been a great audience. Thank you so much. <laughs> Danny likes to come listen to me speak. Yeah. All right. At this point, we might uh, deal with the uh, motion concerning those two, those two bylaws, and we'll carry on with what we're doing. Okay. So. At this point, for bylaw 1582C, utility rate bylaw, we need a third reading. So, uh, yeah, I will move the third reading to uh, bylaw 1582C, utility rate bylaw, which only needs third reading. Thank you. All in favor? Thank you. All right, now, for bylaw 1606E, we passed first reading. We had the public hearing. That's D, right? You said E. 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 It is e. e. It is E, Councillor. Oh, it's, it's, it's C on your agenda. E on the. Yeah. You really D. don't like that one. <laughs> well, no, it's not that. It's, 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 it's seven confusing. C. Seven C. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm. I'm right there. Right. I'm right there. Okay. But but it said down below that we have to rescind 1606 D. No, it, should be, it will happen by default. Yes, it's in the by default. It will happen by default. By default. Okay. Right. That's all I need to know. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Well, e. Thank you. All in favor? Thank you. Now, are you willing to allow for third reading? Yes. If so, yeah, we could. We, we had a public hearing. We do have to allow. So. Yeah. We need to allow. allow, and we need to be anonymous. Wait, wait, we, sorry, need to we need to allow it only allow if it's all on the same day. It is the same we day. We did the first we reading before the, before the public. Oh, did we? Yeah, oh, yeah. That, that was first reading today. Yeah, oh, yeah. Good times, good times. Uh, what, uh, I'm just curious, what would be the uh, implication of waiting till our next meeting to pass this? Would there be any... It has an implication regarding the rates. And, uh, means that getting NMAX uh, advice to get the billing going in January, sure. so it creates a shortage for well, us. I, I would move to allow third reading of bylaw E, or uh, bylaw 1606E. Thank you. All in favor? Thank you. So now... I'll move third reading for bylaw 1606E. Thank you. All in favor? <clears throat> All right. Thanks. So this is passed. Are we good? So now that we have, uh, Danny's still there, Danny, we're going to put you back on the, uh -oh. <laughs> on the hot seat. On the hot seat. And uh, help us to carry on our conversation there. So my, my uh, question for you, Danny, is for, for the requisition, right. What exactly are you going to requisition? Well, it kind of goes a couple of different ways here. Traditionally, I have put in all the lines on these uh, on this budget, um, and I did intentionally leave that one line in, in regards to uh, capital replacement. It's actually in the bottom of the page here is blank because uh, I wanted to open up discussion based on for fleet replacement. I didn't want to add a line on there 
for that reason. I, I wanted to uh, have a conversation and see if we were going to adopt any of this, and then whatever that is, that would go on that line. We've also had other discussions with uh, both the county and the town, and, uh, with Jeff and, and Murray. In regards to that, is if we were going to do something, the option was to keep that money aside to the respective councils, and they hang on to those funds until we need those funds to buy something, an apparatus, whatever. So that's that's kind of where it is. Um, that's kind of where we left it as as we introduced it last uh, last month. So so just for my clarity, then what would we be looking at is initially we'd be passing this operational budget and that will be where our requisitions would come from correct yes this one and that that would be the requisition amount um, and then from a council perspective based on your conversations with jeff and murray each individual council would reserve a set amount of funds each year with the idea that when a vehicle needed to be replaced that then there would be funding available at that point to make yes. that determination. And I think collectively from the board, they should decide from your councils that X amount of dollars are equal, is not in percentage wise. Uh, that's something that's been suggested. Okay. Uh, why do you look at it as equal? Well, I mean, what I'm saying, if we could do it one of two ways, and that being equal, if the town was going to take some, the county would share, it should be equal. That was one possibility. The other way, traditionally, as the requisitions are concerned, it's based on percentages. So why wouldn't you? So I'm putting it that percentage? out there. I, I, that's that's un, that has not been decided yet. So that, that was for part of the because conversation. Because equal for villages would be very difficult to absorb. Absolutely, yeah. So uh, right now we have the share, the lion's share, as a town. So we're probably more like 55%. I think it's 51%. 51. Yeah. And I don't know, well, maybe I'm talking <laughs> yeah, outside the box any, here, but I don't know how that percentage was, was ever arrived at. Population okay. of the western western side of the county and the population of Carson, based on population. Okay. Yeah. FCS says it based on the same model. So. Here is my question for you. Your board will then approve a certain amount of capital expenditure? I'm uh, sorry, for the... For, for the, the 2016, for that line that you cannot put... Yeah, down. I mean, if we're, if we're going to do something with this fleet replacement, it's not going to reflect on the budget anyway, if you folks are going to hang on to the funds. Um, yeah, but what's the policy that you're going to have in place? Well, that's I mean, up for discussion as the board respectively needs to go back to their councils, uh, from what I understand, and decide on how they want to do it or what their preferences are. Nothing's been decided. Because right now you're looking at $124,000 a year on this according to the expiry date as per listing that you Where? mentioned. With, with the caveat that that doesn't include any residual value. Exactly. So it, it's it could be considerably less. less. But it's not a requisition amount that's being requisitioned. That's a determination that we make as a council of how much money we're putting aside for future replacement. So you're looking more for a town policy. That's what it sounds like. That, that's that's what, what it sounds like to me. It sounds like to me. Is that what a county is willing to do? Well. Uh, I haven't heard back from the county, mm -hmm. right? so I can't. No, I'm speak just to questioning. Do um, you have a sense where we're going with this? Well, because it's quite new. Yeah, it is new, and I, I can say that something like this was presented, and I think you might recall back in 2010 and 2011, mm -hmm. and was never adopted. Yeah. Um, a lot of the apparatuses are the same. Some are new, um, but the costs are getting higher rather than going down because of the age of the vehicles. Okay. So if we go back to your operational, it shows less, obviously, because the capital, the total capital budget is no longer reflecting that $40,000 that you had. Right. So in fact, once we refactored that in, it's quite an increase over the previous year. Um, yes. Well, it is. Yeah. So... 
is that something that you have thought about? Is your bad debt something? Because essentially the increase, from what I can figure out, is about the amount of your bad debt. And I understand the bad debts are essentially occurring because of the county not having come forth with the money yet with their citizens. Correct. Is there something that's going to happen there? Are we going to have a policy or something? Or should we draft a common policy regarding bad debt yeah. um, to help you? We've had numerous conversations. That is, I have had numerous conversations with the county. And um, they're hopefully, and I say hopefully, I haven't got 100% commitment from the county, saying that that billing process is going to change within the county. That is, I'm going to invoice the county for any fire occurrences within the county. They're going to pay me. Then the county can assume whether or not they're going to pursue the, the bills. Do you know if so that would go away. Do you know if they're going to pay that 14000 before the end of the year? No, they will you? not. So you will have to carry it out in 2016 still? Because that's $14,000. That's what the increase of your requisition is. It's kind of funny for us to have to pay the share of something that so we don't bear. So that's actually not the numbers that I get. What do you get? Well, the, the increase in bad debt is only $2,000. The increase in the requisition total amount is $26,000. No, no, but what I was trying to say altogether, the amount that is still to be collected is 14000 correct? You have Correctly, to, yes. You still have to collect $14,000. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but the, the, the total no, increase in requisition, though, is $26,000. Yeah, no, I know that. Okay. Right. I know that. But, yeah, okay, so it's double. Double the bad debt. Close to. So, this is something that I was wondering should we have, or do you have in your bylaw, or do you? Do you have something in your agreement regarding bad debt and how are we going to deal with that? Because we could be the bearer of bad debts for that matter. We could be the one who in town cause you to have citizens who don't pay. Right. Um, we don't have that right now. No. But we could. That's because it, it, most of no. the insurance covers those, those costs. That's, that's the difference. That's the problem because in the county they don't have the same insurance policies. The, the insurance to fight a fire, let's say Boundary Creek, is going to cost a lot more than the town person is going to have to pay. So some of those people choose not to because they can't afford it. See, in town, if your house burns down or catches fire, your insurance policy covers the cost of the fire department going out there. Anyway. And also, the as part of the town taxes, the cost of fire, the fire department is built into the taxes, or in the county it is not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but what I was trying to say, that $14,000, part of that requisition, therefore we pay... Your percentage of. A percentage of something that none to do. Right. So, so the county has said, that, and that, that really comes down to being a county issue, mm -hmm. they have got to put something in place to, to require that. We talked about it briefly. Yeah, and we talked about that for quite a while. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, I feel I have to do my due diligence to reflect it, so it's transparent. No, I understand, I understand yeah. that, but I also understand that we then requisition for something that has yeah. nothing to do with us. And, and myself as a ratepayer in town don't feel I should have to. Well, maybe when we are requisitioned, maybe it would be fair to reflect that amount out. Yes. Pull that down. Maybe that will be one of the conversations that we have at our next meeting. There you go. Okay. And can you just give me a little bit of information on the $425 per firefighter that you have? Help me understand what yeah. the so, uh, Alberta College of Paramedic uh, registration is. Help me understand what that helped them with. Yeah, basically. Um, we have a lot of the volunteer firefighters throughout the county and the town um, that are registered now with Alberta College of Paramedics, where there's a $425 annual fee that they, as volunteers, have to pay right now. Okay. Um, 
going back further with that, the volunteer firefighters are at a very minimal hourly rate yes. when they fight fires. And I'm just suggesting, and I, um, and I put that in there as a budgetary line, uh, number, where we perhaps pay that for them so they can still continue to do their services as a volunteer. So as being a, it has a perk basically as, as a volunteer firefighter, we even pay that for them. Okay, We've never so, done it before. So that is something that any firefighter has to belong to. Uh, yes, Before if they're going to be licensed and practice it for the ambulance, yeah. because we do rodeos, we could enhance our service. Um, the next board meeting on the 3rd of December, Upper Health Services is going to come and uh, do a presentation for their MFR program. Where if the fire department is called out, we can provide a certain level, and there's four levels uh, for the province, we can practice what they've been trained to do. Okay. So essentially, it's an education piece along it, with a licensing piece. It's basically a license for them to operate as a uh, medical caregiver. All right. Thank you. Well, mm -hmm. now I understand what that is. I do not know what it was. Thank you. Okay. You got my answers. Did I pass? <laughs> right. You enlightened us. Uh, uh, thank, thank you, you Danny. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. Do you need a recess? Well, uh, Councilor Baker has a question for Danny. Oh, okay. Danny, Danny, I'm so sorry. I got a couple okay. of questions for you. Okay. You've got it on your expenses, uh, building insurance. Does the town not own that building? Yes, they do. And do we not insure it? Uh, it, it is insured through the town. I pay the premiums. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah. And uh, on the vehicle liability, insurance on the vehicle liability? Yes. Uh, what's the story there, too? All the fire trucks. All the fire trucks? Everything, yep. Okay. That's it? All Thank right. You. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Uh, Councillor Bond is asking if we could recess for five minutes. Sure. I move to mm -hmm. recess for five minutes. Thank you. Sure. All in favor? Yeah. Get your hand up. I want to see you suffer. <laughs> <laughs> Make a note. Make a note. <laughs> Make a note. <laughs> yeah. Recorded one. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.